Hello everybody, I've seen this floating around as a popular Mother's Day gift item this year. I wanted to hop on here and show you how you can make your own. This tutorial is going to show you how to do this in Silhouette Studio and then I'm going to utilize my Glowforge laser to engrave this on clear acrylic. I'm going to be making a keychain but the same basic steps can be used if you want to do this in vinyl crafting or if you want to use other materials in your Glowforge. I'll get this deleted and then we'll start fresh. First step is to type out the word mom. And then the second step is to type your names out. And since I'm going to be using the I Love Glitter font, I'm not going to put a space in between my names. So now I'll select mom and go over here to the right side panel and use the font that I want with it. And I like to use a bold font so I've liked this Bernard MT condensed and then for my names I'm gonna make that smaller real quick I'll use the I love glitter font and in order to create that heart that goes in between the names you'll use the underscore button on your keyboard underscore is usually next to the zero on your number line and you hit shift and that button and you'll get the heart to show up now I want all of this to weld together I'll right click and hit weld and then before I click away from this I'll group it together because right now the dots of our eyes are acting as separate objects Now all of that is together. The next step is to create an offset around our names. And in order to create an offset, you'll go over here to the right side panel and click on this star button. You'll want this first offset option, so click it. And then since I don't know exactly how much of an offset I want, I'm gonna click the down button until it gets in the position that I like. And that looks good to me, so I'll hit apply now. Now, temporarily, I'm going to go ahead and group these together, my offset and my name. And then I want to go to the mom and get these resized and position how I want them. So most of the time with two names, I see that people like to center the heart in the middle of the O. But if you have three names or one name, just get that positioned and rearranged however you like. This looks pretty good to me now, but I need to ungroup my name from my offset for the next step. I'm going to click on that part and right click and say ungroup and now I'm going to drag away my cursive lettering and for the next step I'll need to color in my mom and my offset so we can see how they're interacting with each other so I'll make the mom pink and I'll make the offset blue I do that because you want to make sure that your offset is on top of the word mom because when we go to subtract it won't work right if your offset is behind the word mom like this. If you colored them in and you ended up with your offset behind mom then you can either click on mom and tell it to go to the back by clicking this button up here or you can click on your offset and tell it to come to the front by clicking this button. Now that it's in the right position, I'll select both of those and go over here to the right side modify panel, click on it, and hit subtract. Now we've made that cutout in our word mom. Before we click away, we'll right click and say group. Now I'll color in this name. I'll just do it um, in black so that we can now go up here and get it positioned how we need it to be. So I usually drag it with my mouse and get it pretty close and then I use the arrows on my keyboard for fine tuning. Now this design is pretty much done. If you're going to engrave this on your Glowforge then you can set the colors to be the same colors because I'll want both Madison 
and Caroline and mom to all be engraved. So I'm going to go ahead and make that all one color because it is one function when I send it to the Glowforge. Now if you were going to use wood and needed to perform two different functions, say you wanted to cut mom out of wood and then engrave the names, then you just make those two different colors. So now when I got to the Glowforge, I could tell it green is for cutting and black is for engraving. Keep those also in mind depending on how you want your design to be in the end. But we're making a keychain and I want it all engraved. For the next part, I need to make a shape to cut this out. We can do that in two different ways. If you just want a basic shape, you can come over here to this panel and click on rectangle or rounded edges, or maybe you want an oval or something crazier. You can pick out any of these and do whatever you want. So you can click this and then always remember if you're making a keychain to add your hole and I usually use about 0.1 to 0.125 and I actually want to, if I was doing this, I would bring this in closer. Don't want it to be that big. And then always think about how far away from this edge your circle is as well. You don't want it to get it too close or else that's going to be pretty brittle. So there's one option for you if you just wanted it a standard shape like that. And then when I'm done with everything, I'll group it all together and then resize it however I want. So right now it's about 5 inches long by 1.665 inches wide. I think that's a little bit too big for a keychain. So I'm going to resize it down to about 3 inches. And you can still make this wider, you know, nor narrow, however you want. But I'll get it close to about one inch by almost or a little over three inches. So this one would be complete and I could send it on to the Glowforge. Since I'm doing clear acrylic, then normally I would mirror this by right click and flip horizontally and then save it. But now there's an option during the premium trial to do that in the Glowforge user interface. So I'm going to leave it like this and then do it in the Glowforge app. Another option I like to use for cutting this out is to create another offset around the entire object here. So I can go over here to the offset panel again and click this option. And I would just like to make sure that the mom part is overlapping down here which at this size it is so I'll go ahead and click apply and I'll just make this larger so we can see it a little better so this just gives a little bit more of a, a fun shape to work with and I need to create my hole here again for the keychain but I don't think there's enough space right here right now so I'll double click on this line and then it'll allow me to adjust the point. So I'm just going to click in the middle there and pull out and also do a little there. And to simplify it and make it more curvy, I can hit the make curve button. So that just brought that point out so that I can put my circle there. Go up here to make my circle. So I'm just going to tell it that I want it to be 0.125 and 0.125. I like the way that looks, so now I'm going to group it all together. And once again, the red is going to be cut out, where the black is going to be engraved. And this is the way I want mine to look, so now I'm actually going to save the file. as an SVG. Now we'll head over to the Glowforge app and get this loaded up. Here we are in my design library so I'm going to hit create and then upload from file and find where I saved my mom keychain and hit open. Then it's going to process it to upload it into our Glowforge user interface. As you can see, I'm using a piece of scrap acrylic. I'm going to type in what I'm using here. So I have the medium clear acrylic, so I'll select that. And then since I want this to engrave, I'll click on engrave. 
but what I like to do when I do something in acrylic is to defocus it a little bit. I have this as a save setting. Usually the default setting is going to be this, 1000 full power, and then your focus height is 125. And I'm going to just defocus it a little bit because the I Love Glitter font is so thin, I don't want to defocus it as much as I usually do or else I'm afraid that will get a little blurry. I'm just going to change that to uh, 200. And I've just upped it by 0.75 by making it 0.2. Now I'll rotate this on here so that it will fit in a tiny space that I have available. And again, since I'm doing this in the clear acrylic, I want to engrave on the back of the acrylic. So like I said, I should have, or usually I will flip that in my Silhouette Studio. But since it's now an option during the trial to flip that in the Glowforge user interface, I'm going to go ahead and do that here instead. Clicked on my object, and now I'm going to click this flip vertically and it has basically mirrored my design for me. And why you want to do that is because you can engrave on the back side of your acrylic so that when you flip it over it reads correctly and the front of your acrylic is smooth. So if you're coming from the vinyl crafting world this would be something like using a heat transfer vinyl. Usually with heat transfer vinyl you put it face down and mirror your design and then when you flip it to press it everything is the way it's supposed to be. Same idea there. Now that all of this is ready to go, we'll hit print, see how long it's going to take. Engraving is the longest process on the Glowforge. So this one says it's going to take 7 minutes and 14 seconds, and that is a pretty good amount of time for something like this. So what I'm going to do instead, since this is really an example, I did cut mine earlier, and the video I'm going to show you of cutting it is from one earlier. This is a good tip to remember that if you find out that an engraving or anything is taking longer than you think it should, uh, it's important to keep in mind that your head of your Glowforge is moving horizontally in this direction. When I had it set to do vertically, it would only do this amount at a time, whereas you can tell that you're able to cover more space if you allow it to move horizontally. So on this scrap piece, I don't really have enough room to actually run this again, but I want to show you that it is a lot faster if you orient this in a horizontal fashion. We're able to cut the time down by a lot. So we were over 7 minutes before, and now it would only take 3 minutes and 12 seconds. And you can see that that's what I did earlier. I actually had it cut out right here horizontally, and it took about the same amount of time. So that's always a good tip to keep in mind when you're working with the Glowforge. Try flipping it in another direction and you can hit print and cancel as many times as you want in order for it to give you the estimated print time. Now I would hit print on this and go print it on the Glowforge. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and please like, subscribe, and comment and let me know what you think about this project. If you haven't bought your Glowforge yet, 
please consider using my referral code, which can be found in the description below. You save on the purchase of any model of the Glowforge, and I get the same in return to buy more materials and keep creating for you. Thank you so much for watching.